Good evening, Fernwood. It is your daydreaming dramaturg, Neil, and it's time for us to contextualize and explore another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are watching today episode 215 from January 28th, 1977. It is time for us to reflect upon yesterday's episode, which begins with Mary and Tom at breakfast getting a visit from Nat Dearborn, who is Patty's lawyer. Nat is hoping to find real evidence of domestic abuse, Conjecture and observations aren't good enough. He plays devil's advocate to try to get clear and useful information for a trial. Sadly, Mary and Tom are not able to recall any instances of seeing Garth strike Pat. And when Nat asks if Patty ever imagined killing Garth, Mary stands up and remembers that one time she did. Then at the factory, Tom is evasive with Charlie because... He's seen someone that he believes is Loretta. He asks Charlie if Charlie is sure that the woman in the bandages is Loretta, and Charlie is sure based on the evidence that he has seen. Then Max Slattery shows up excited because Lulu has accepted his proposal and there's going to be a wedding. And not only that, everyone is invited, including Tom and Charlie. Then over at the jail, Wanda visits May and Wanda's ambitions are becoming much clearer to May, who wants none of that. Cleet Meisenheimer shows up to interview May, and Wanda is thrilled that May is going to be getting this attention. Then after the commercial break, we're back at the jail, and May is reluctantly getting ready to be interviewed. She takes the mic and pleads her case calmly and evenly, and we see around her Pat is watching, and we see Cleet getting slightly uncomfortable. And then we see many of the couples of Fernwood watching this interview, having their various interactions, talking about what May has brought up. This conversation is starting. And May makes it clear that this is not not about a war of the sexes. This is about finding pleasure in people's homes. And the wives in their beds do their best to make their husbands listen, to hear them out, to hear out their experiences. And then May says, exactly this it is all summed up by one simple thing that we should spend some time and attention at the stimulation of the and we see the various reactions of the people around the town to this obscured information cleat does his best to clarify that this area that was bleeped out should be very close to the place And the bedrooms of Fernwood, well, they have their conversations and they do what fun they do. And May is leaving Fernwood and she thanks us all and she hopes that more good things will come of this. And everyone, that was a big episode yesterday. It's Friday today, so who knows what bigness will come. We've got some big seeds that have been planted, big journeys that we are on. So. Why don't we continue with this Friday episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Mary Hartman! Mary Hartman! I mean, Tom, it is not my concern. It's not my concern if you want to go sneaking off to Lou's Diner on Route 67. It just isn't. Yeah, that's right, Charlie. It's none of your business. I mean, I mean, you and Mary mean a whole barrel of apples to red and me but but i don't want you to do anything foolish i'd hate for you to do anything foolish like that you know but well, nothing foolish has happened Charlie. if but i don't want to know it if you if you want to go fooling around at lou's diner i, I don't want to know it well then why don't you drop it huh? hey guys Hi, Tiny. How are you? Both see May on TV last night, direct <laughs> from her jail cell. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, they bleep that word. Not all the kids are taking sex education anyway. She said... Yeah. <laughs> she did. That's, I think. <laughs> that just goes to prove to you, Tiny, if you want to see sex and violence on TV, what you do is you watch the news, because the news ain't the entertainment. 
Well, that maze got a lot of brass talking over the airways like that about uh, female unfulfillment. Yeah, the woman didn't even know they were unfulfilled until May told them. How bad it could it have been if they couldn't even figure it out for themselves? <laughs> that maze just a troublemaker? She's stirring up all uh -huh. those women. If Garth Gimble wouldn't have a Christmas tree sticking out of him right now if his wife hadn't got agitated. I kept looking over at Beretta, and I was hoping that the shock of hearing that on TV would, you know, kind of shake her out of her coma. Because, <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's wild. You don't hear that on TV every day. That, that's kind of erotic. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it was. No, I don't think so. I mean, May talked like, more like it was biology than romance, and uh, talking about it takes away the mystery, and mystery is half the fun. <laughs> Yeah. Now, George, George would never do anything like that. Oh, all right, all George right. George would right, never R. do a bit of that. Would you, you wouldn't do any of that stuff, would you? Uh, listen, Martha and I had a long talk last night. Hey, you look a little groggy, you know that? I mean, was she keeping you up nights, is she? This is husband and wife stuff, very personal. Like the Olinsky method? <laughs> How'd you like the George Shumway mouth method? Mm. Hey, you know what? You know what? I think I'm the only guy around here who keeps his wife on a straight and there. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, maybe you are. Mary, Mary, wait a minute. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll get you out of the house. What are you doing here at the plant? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. What's just a very simple reason? Actually, it's so simple, it's almost funny. You know, I mean, you know, simple things can be very funny where complicated things can tend to be very tragic. You know what I mean, big fella? Oh, what, what, what is it? For God's sakes, Mary, what happened? His lunch. <coughs> he forgot his lunch. You forgot your lunch, Tom. Well, Tom's some lucky guy to have a wife delivery service. Hmm? Yeah, I, I think so. Oh, yeah. oh thanks. Well... So, uh, this is your workplace, huh? <laughs> Has a nice locker room feel. I don't mean a smell, of course. Yeah, I didn't mean that or anything. Uh, now, he seems like a very nice guy. Nice guy. Dumb coffee machine, dropped the cup, no coffee. Ah! Uh, it sounds just like my toaster. I have the same problem. It won't do a thing unless you smack it. Could you step out of the side, please? Mm. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, we could use her on the assembly line. <laughs> Watch your mouth, Tiny. You know, Tom, I gotta tell you something. This plant place isn't such a bad place. It really isn't that bad. You know what? You know what I really like a lot about the place? I really like the feel that you get with these imitation Picasso wall graphs here. You know, I like that. And the, um, the colored lithograph feeling there. I like that. No kidding? I never noticed. Uh-huh. You know, my guess is they did a psychological study on what colors you guys work best under. They do that, you know. You know something? I always wondered what it was that woke me up when I came in here. I always thought it was a noise. Listen, Mary. Mary, come here. Come here. Listen. Don't you have something that you can do at the house, don't you, huh? No, I did everything, Tom. I did everything. I really did. The floors look terrific. I mean, they shine like the devil and the deep blue sea. Yeah, well, listen. Uh, thanks for the lunch, and uh, you better go home and... Uh... Okay, uh, you, you, you'll be home a little early tonight. Well, I, I don't know. I've got a couple of errands to run, and then i got to fix an air filter, etc. cetera, and uh, don't, don't wait dinner for me, okay? Yeah, fine. Okay. Bye, guys. Come back real soon. Maybe I should come back periodically just to check out the coffee machine. You know, it's just a... That just needs a dime, that's all. Just a kick in a dime. Bye, see ya. You have helped me enormously overcome coming too soon. Sincerely... Quickie. Oh, congratulations on your telecast. Oh, the women of Fernwood are grateful and relieved. Oh, it's and a lot of the men feel the same way. Oh. <laughs> you mind? You must be a very happy young lady there. 
The issue is now in the hands of the men and women of Fernwood where it belongs. Yeah, but where does that leave you at? Well, just where I am. I'll continue my work here. The judicial process is so long, I'm sure I'll have plenty of time to work. I don't know, Ms. Olenski. It just seems like a shame to me that a real vital, sensual woman like yourself has to be stuck here in a jail without a man to kind of warm her up, you know what I mean? I'll tell you something, what I've heard from time to time is that some of your, your inmates just get driven just right up the walls, right into perversion from their loneliness. Mm. I've made my point, Merle, and I have to pay the price. People do have to pay the price. Oh, Henry did. Sinead did. Well, well were they woman livers too? Well, that, that's not important. The important thing is I bet they didn't have a lenient mayor around at that time to get the charges dropped for them. Now, why would you want to help me? Oh, do I smell a masculine motive? <laughs> no, that's a good guess, but you're, you're wrong this time, Ms. Olinsky. Actually, it's my wife. She, you know why not? I'm a little political, lovely little wife. She, she told me that everything I would do to interfere with you would only help you and your cause, and sure enough, she was right. I mean, look here, here's a telegram from Newsweek. They want to interview you right here in jail. That's ridiculous. Well, I've run one round one, Merle. The quality of satisfaction for women. Now, I'm afraid that's only the beginning, too. And once you give them people a taste of real kind of radical change like you got right here, they're going to want more. I mean, we're talking about sex now, but tomorrow it could be tax reform. God knows what happens after that. I, I tell you, Ms. Olinsky, I've always thought that the, the business of government ought to just rely totally on the, on the democratic process, you know, and not, not bother with the, the will of the people. How did you get elected, Merle? By sitting in the most coupons? No, no, I got elected by being fair and square, just like I'm being by letting you out of jail. Here you go. Oh, what's this? That's your pornographic uh, research you got there. I want you to take that with you. You're going back where you come from. Oh, I am so happy to be leaving. Oh, these facilities are far below bottom. <laughs> come in. Barry? Charlie! Hi, I thought Hi. I was to see you. Surprise! I'm really glad to see you. Well, I just, I just thought I'd come by and see you. I felt like talking. Oh, no, I'm really glad you came by. I mean, I really always like to talk to you. I hope you don't mind my stopping at dinner, you know, while we're talking or anything. Oh, not at all. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I often, uh, I often talk to Loretta while she's making dinner. Oh, yeah, how is Loretta? Oh, she's fine. At least, uh, as far as you can tell, because, uh... What she does is just lie there, mostly. Yeah. But uh, she did uh, sit up yesterday, and she wrote me a note, said, uh, I have never seen you before in my life. And then she sat down again. I think that those bandages are strangling her circulation. But they don't stop her from writing. I have never seen you before in my life. I mean, what a lyric. Gee, that's catchy. Yes, it is. You know, I really want to stop by and visit her tomorrow. You know, maybe I could bring her some of this, you know, like a special treat or something. What is that? Oh, this is just, it's like a new potluck version kind of thing. It's from Women's Day. It's, uh, it's also, you know, on how to clean out your refrigerator uh, stew. It, it's like a new thing, you know, that they make up. It's one, two, three, duck shot! missed it. See, that's bad when that happened. You got it? Thanks very yeah. much. I really appreciate it. <sighs> yeah, guess what? What? I saw. Did you see that? Uh, oh, I meant it. Yes! The thing on Taylor in there. Yeah. I guess everybody in Fernwood saw that? that. Yeah. Well, you know what I think? What? I think that uh, sex in Fernwood's never going to be the same. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you something. This potluck thing, this sure comes <laughs> I can tell you, especially if you have a lot of leftovers like this, which I sure do have a lot of leftovers, especially since Tom's been missing so many dinners lately, you know? Yeah, uh, Mary, let's, uh, let's 
sort, sort of what I came to talk to you about. Uh, you mean these leftovers here? Oh. Oh, you mean that uh, Tom's been missing the dinners and stuff like that? Mary, I, I'm, I'm real worried. I mean, uh, <laughs> boy, it feels strange to be over here talking about this. Uh, have you have you noticed a change in Tom lately? I mean, have you? Does he seem edgy to you? Yeah, I have noticed that. I have noticed that. That stuff really smells awful, doesn't it? Really smells awful. I I uh, I, I have noticed that this, that it's like an edgy. There is an edginess. I I thought maybe it was too much e. You know that can happen with too much e. You know you get like uh, there's an edginess that comes over you. And I I thought mm, maybe it was that. And you know he's been working these you know, double shifts and stuff like that. And he's been staying out all night. And I just thought, you know, since that kind of made me a little edgy, that, you know, maybe I was making him a little edgy or something like that. Yeah, well, Mary, the trouble is if, if, if he gets edgy like that, there's no telling what he might do. I mean, uh, I mean, he could jump in the car and go out to lose diner. You know, I thought something. maybe I could help him, you know, with the edginess and everything like that. I was thinking that maybe I could, uh, you know, get, get a job or something really? like that. Yeah, well, I thought maybe, you know, then he wouldn't have to work the double shift because I, I could uh, get a job, you know, I could, uh, I, I don't, I could be like a file clerk or something. Well, that's, uh, that's terrific, Mary. That's just, uh, that's great. I don't know if I want to be a file clerk. Charlie, what did you come over here to tell me? I mean, there's something in your eyes. I know. Oh, nothing, nothing, well, nothing, Mary. Charlie, um, you know, I, I know it's a ridiculous thing for me to say, and I don't mean to it, it hurt you or anything by hinting that, you know, you'd be in, uh, implying such a thing or anything, but uh, is Tom seeing another woman? See, Charlie, um, you know, I've been reading up a little about the law lately, because, you know, um, Pat's in prison, and I, and I know that uh, silence in the courts means yes. Uh, no. Charlie's that way. He's been going out to Lou's Cafe. I mean, what's going on at Lou's Cafe? Okay, never, never mind, Charlie. Never mind. It's okay. It's forget it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, don't, and don't worry. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I won't tell Tom you're a stool pigeon or anything like that. Don't worry. I right, just uh, listen. There's some uh, potluck on the stove if you want it. Okay. It's right there for you. And uh, I just, I have a date. That's all. I just have a date. date. Oh yeah. I, I have to go to uh, to 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 uh, Lou's uh, cafe. And uh, um, I'm real sorry about the smell here. Mother, I've been so afraid. Oh, dear. I just had my hair done. Oh, it looks lovely. <laughs> Mother, I'm going to win this case. They are not going to frame me. I just hope you have a good lawyer, dear. How much did Garth leave you? Well, we didn't save anything, but I have a nice lawyer from the legal aid, and he's going to take my case. Oh, good luck. That's why poor people always get convicted. Oh, God, this cell is dreary. I don't know how you can stand it here. Day after day and night after night, I'd probably crack. Mother, how's little Garth? Oh, I haven't seen him yet. I came straight here. Maybe we ought to take him out of school for the duration of the scandal. You know how cruel classmates can be. Scandal? What scandal? Is there a scandal? I don't know. In my whole family of six women, not one ever killed her husband with a Christmas tree. Mother, I didn't kill Garth. I'm innocent. Maybe you should plead insanity. Oh, no, but then how would that look? I don't care so much anymore about how things look. Oh, there it goes again, my migraine. Oh. I'll see if I can get you some aspirin. Oh, emperor. Oh, dear. Well, I guess we'll just have to make the best of it. 
It's not as though this has never happened before. And to good families, too. Like Lana Turner, she wasn't a nobody. Oh, Mother. Oh, well, what else are mothers for? <laughs> oh, dear, don't put your head on here. This sweater isn't scotch-guarded. Hey, hey, Lulu, Lulu, listen, I, I got to talk to you, huh? Well, looky who's here if it didn't little old Tommy boy. I thought you'd be coming back. You gonna be one of my regular fellas? <coughs> hey, come on, cut it out. We, have, we, we, we gotta talk, huh? Okay, okay, I got a few minutes left on my dinner break. Of course, now you can't ask me to get engaged or nothing, because somebody already beat you to it, you know. <laughs> Lou, I'm gonna be over here taking a little bit of my dessert break. Now listen, okay, Lou. What I'm, uh, what I'm about to say to you, it's gonna sound very, very strange. Nothing can't be too strange for me. I heard it all in this dump. Sick. Eh, kinda interesting, though. You are not Lulu Loretta. You are Loretta Lulu. What the hell's that supposed to mean, Turkey? Well, now, a couple of weeks back, I mean, something terrible happened to a sweet little innocent girl from Fernwood, and she turned into a man-eating Route 67 Lulu. Look, you are Loretta Haggers, and you are married to Charlie Haggers. Charlie Haggers? Charlie Haggers. Not the name that guy Mac was talking to me about. That picture I had, he said he looked like a guy named Charlie Haggers. Hey, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Oh, I was what involved. the heck does that mean? No, it, it doesn't. It don't mean nothing. No, I mean, it proves what I'm saying. No, Haggers. no, it proves exactly what I'm saying. That's what it does. You are Loretta Haggers, and that mummy in the hospital isn't. Mummy in a hospital. Listen, buddy, I'm Miss Lulu, soon to become Lulu Slattery, all right? Now got a lot of good things going for me right now, and I don't want nobody screwing it up. Well, I gotta talk to Mac, then. I'm gonna talk to him. He ain't here. He's on a run, and he ain't coming home until just right before our wedding next week. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Lulu. I mean, Loretta. I mean, Lulu. Look, don't you remember anything about your past, huh? Don't you? Will you stop asking me these crazy questions. No, wait a minute. How the hell can you marry a man when you don't even know who the hell you are? Huh? You don't even know your last name or how old you are or your father's name or your friends? And what about your rising career as a superstar? Stop it! I don't know what you're talking about! And you're not willing to listen? All I know is, is that Miss Lou Lewis found her a nice, strong man that's gonna take real good care of her. And nobody or nothing is gonna stop it. Now, wait a minute. What about all the friends who love Hey, oh, stop it! I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't want you saying anything else to me about it again. You're just jealous because I'm married, Mac. They're all just jealous because I'm married. Hey, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Look, look, look. Well, hey, you get, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. I gotta ask you a question. Listen to me. Hey. Now look. Look, I know I got no right to ask you this, but I got one more question to ask. No more questions, Buster. Now listen to me. Now just listen. Now listen, the other night I came in here very drunk, right? Huh? And I woke up, and I was in your room, and I, and I, I don't remember nothing. So what? Well, look, uh, what I, what I want to, hey, did you and me, I mean, did we, huh? Did... Hell no. I slept in the chair in the corner the whole night. But let me tell you something, little Tommy what? boy. If you and me had been together that night, what? believe me, Toots, you would have known. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Uh -huh. Hey, lady, can I help you? <laughs> Look at the gun. You gotta pay for it. No, that's okay. is a very big misunderstanding and I guess things are going to have to settle themselves but wow we it seems like Tom has been 
on two ends because in that first scene it's still clear that he doesn't know if he has cheated on Mary, which it's we know he hasn't, but he doesn't because, you know, he's had some conflicting information put his way. And Charlie is convinced that the woman in the bandages is Loretta. But there, well, Charlie is now confused about what's happening at Lou's place. And I think because Tom was confused about what was going on at Lou's place, it only makes sense that Charlie would also be confused. So we have confusion upon confusion, which later will be confusion upon confusion upon confusion. And then what's awkward in this scene, or what was surprising to me, was to see Mary in this space. Now, the meeting earlier this week, I thought was in the factory break room, because the walls were painted similarly, and it might have been, but this was, I feel like, the first time I remember seeing Mary in the break room during break time. There has been at least one other woman in the break room that was made that I can remember. Maybe Mary has visited once or so, but... It just seemed so shocking to see her there, you know. We usually see just the men of the break room, the men of the factory there, and really only our small cast of people, not all of the other people who could be in there. To see Mary there was a shock to the system. We'll talk a little bit later about one of the things that might be going through Mary's mind. Tom is uncomfortable and he sends her home and yeah. And then we get what might be a final goodbye to May Olinsky as Merle lets her go. She's got a bag full of fan letters and Merle gives her her research and releases her. And, you know, that's the crux of the scene or that's the entirety of the scene, really. You know, I don't know if that was going to lead to any more. It seems like Merle is admitting defeat. It seems like Wanda has won, and it seems like May has won, and May is free to go, and good for her. And as I said yesterday, I hope her message spreads. It's 45 years later, so that message has spread just a bit, but you know what I'm saying. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Charlie's confusion upon confusion is going to be spreading a bit because he comes to Mary with concern. And Mary has a lot of different things on her mind. And one of those is that she would like to relieve Tom of some of the pressure that he's been under, which is really noble. It was just mentioned in one sentence, but she is thinking about taking on a job to become a two-income household, which, considering how iconically housewife Mary is, and Mary's a fairly special kind of housewife, to think of changing entirely from being a housewife to being a job holder must have been very shocking as a thought for, for Mary to think through. Must have been very unsettling. It's so different. That gets mixed in with the feelings about Tom going off to Lou's place because Charlie thinks that because of Tom's confusion about what happened, Charlie thinks that Tom has been cheating on Mary. And Tom thought that he might have. He didn't, but he thought that he might have because of that one awful person that told him that he did. There's a lot of stress going on. and Charlie has been holding on to a secret that he... It's not a real secret, but that's what he has been doing, right? So the thing that he thought wasn't true, but that's what he was holding on to. And he was... It went from loud and chaotic with the cabbages splashing into not splashing into just banging into the pan i wish they had splashed i don't know how you cook cabbage in a pan with no fluid it went from that chaotic mess to sitting at the table listening quietly and that was such a subtle shift not subtle really but it shifted right into real talk which is my favorite stuff on this show about what was going on and Mary suspected that Tom might have been cheating on her which again he wasn't but Charlie thinks he was and Tom isn't sure that he was so then they head off but between that we get a brief scene between Patty and her mother and her mother is as awful as we remember a few weeks ago uh, we were talking in the comments about 
Patty's pattern of abuse, or rather the pattern, the gimbal pattern of abuse. And some of Patty's experience is that I feel she was emotionally abused by her mother. Just in the two scenes that we've seen with her, it's clear that affection in that family is messed up. Now, because we had some technical difficulties, I had to watch some snippets of scenes a couple more times. And Lana Turner was brought up during that scene. And let me look up Lana Turner. But it turns out that there was a domestic abuse situation in the 1950s. And her boyfriend was murdered, or it appears, I didn't read deeply because I'm shooting a video right now. But it appears that Lana Turner's daughter may have stabbed her boyfriend, Lana's boyfriend, because of domestic abuse situation. So now I have a little bit of context for what was being referred to in that scene. However, we then get over to Lou's place. Tom finds Loretta, or finds Lulu, because Lulu doesn't want to be Loretta, apparently, or doesn't want to hear. She's happy with what she has. Uh, a few days ago, or last week sometime, I caught this video about dissociative identity disorder. So I'm going to just share this link because Lulu definitely is a second personality and I feel like it's thoughtful uh, to consider what real dissociative identity would look like. And there are a few YouTubers that have channels about this. So, hey, let's share some of that experience. Let's learn a little bit. However, Loretta isn't Loretta, it's Lulu. Tom is very clear that this is Loretta. He's put together all of the clues that he can. I was surprised he didn't do it immediately on Monday, but I guess it takes a while to put a brain in order to figure out what the heck is going on. What happens at the end is that even if Loretta doesn't, or even if Lulu doesn't want to be Loretta, at the very least, Tom confirms that he did not sleep with Lulu. And at that point, that's when Tom celebrates with a hug and at that instant Mary walks in and takes it the wrong way and if she had stayed for one minute more to see them separate to see who it was well we have some unpacking to do next week because there's a lot of confusion that we are all still swimming in at least Tom is less confused but I feel like yeah we've got to sort through the chaos right now so everyone thank you so much for watching this episode thank you so much for leaving your thoughts and feelings in the comments as we love to do thank you so much for interpreting and contextualizing with me and we will see you next week in fernwood